Well, good morning to you. Good to have you join us online. Uh, man, isn't it great to have the nicer weather this week? Uh, it's uh, good timing for me. I finished Netflix this week. I've, I've watched it all. Uh, I don't know about you. Are you watching more TV than normal? That's certainly the case for, for, for me. Oh, it just seems like we're living in strange days, right? Uh, COVID has challenged everything that we thought was certain in life. Uh, it certainly shattered that false sense of control we had. Uh, it's, it's left me feeling uncertain how much I should be talking about COVID with you, right? I, at some point, I think we're going to get sick of talking about it. I'm, I'm about there. Um, and yet it's, it's this dark cloud looming over all of us. It's pretty hard to ignore. And, and the longer it goes, um, the more strange, or it's, just, it's becoming strange in a different way. Parents, you're probably getting sick now, of, uh, sick and tired of, of trying to teach your kids. I think it's giving us a new appreciation for, for, what, the, for what our teachers have to uh, go through. Uh, we'll be glad to send our kids off to school. Let's just put it that way. Uh, talking with grandparents, some of the grandparents, you guys are going bonkers, right? You haven't been able to maybe hold or hug your grandkids for a long time, so you're going pretty squirrely too. You know, the longer this continues, I just begin to question, um, well, is, it, is, this no, is this the new normal? Or am I going to go back to what was as quickly as I can? Uh, or is there going to be something new in, in all of this? And, and I think we're asking that, or I'm asking that not only just for myself personally, my, my home life, but collectively, I think we, we're beginning to ask that as, as a church, right? How do we respond uh, and look ahead to what's, what's coming for the church. Because nothing has prepared us for this. Like, this has never happened before. My, my family has been reading through the book of Acts over the last few, few, few weeks. And uh, what struck me this week uh, as we read through the story, or just thinking about the story of the early church is that they didn't know how to do church either, right? That there was no one telling them what to do next. They didn't, they didn't have a plan. They didn't have a playbook. You know, I'm hearing the question uh, popping up, what can I do? How can I make a difference? What, what kind of impact can we make? And I, and I think in a global crisis, we can, I don't know, we can, can begin to feel pretty small or insignificant. And the... The mental and emotional energy it takes to just to do the basics of life right now, it just cons it seems to consume so much of us. Uh, again, I don't know about you, but I just don't have the, uh, uh, the capacity that I did before. And so we're asking, I think we're asking, how do we, how do we respond? What's, what's coming next? I, I want to remind you, uh, and bring you back to the response of the yearly church when they were facing a lot of unknowns and uncertainty, just like we are. And so I want to read to you just a verse, quick verse from Acts chapter 1, verse 14. And it reads, They all met together and were constantly united in prayer. That is, uh, that's anchored me this week. That, that prayer is the first response of the church. Like no matter what time we're living in, whether it's times of peace or times of pandemic, we as God's people are called to pray. That, that we are not small or insignificant or even useless. If all, if all you do is pray, whoa, look out. Right? Prayer not only moves the heart of God, but it, it moves our hearts as well, as well, right? It aligns our hearts and our minds with God's presence and his, and his promises and, and the power that God has. WEC, we have to believe that prayer changes things. That prayer unleashes things. That the Holy Spirit is going to work. That whatever happens next, it's going to begin with prayer and the leading of the Holy Spirit. So this is how Jesus taught the early church to pray. We're going to look at another prayer of Jesus. And, and out of that prayer, I think there are five commitments that I want us to consider that are for us 
now. So if you've got your Bibles w- with you, uh, turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. <clears throat> and we're going to look at, uh, well, a, a famous prayer of Jesus, what's traditionally known as the Lord's Prayer. And, and so we're going to put a, a kind of a common version of it up on the screen now. I'd love for you just to join in speaking this out loud with me together in, in our homes together. All right, let's, let's try it together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our, our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. Amen. So let's take a look at that prayer of Jesus and highlight five commitments. So Jesus begins again, our father in heaven. And and we keep coming back to this, uh, this opening of Jesus in his prayers. And and we said it at Easter, I said it at Easter that to, to declare or to say God as our father is not only a prayer for relationship, but it's a declaration of relationship. And I know the idea of God as father can, man, it can conjure up a lot of emotions for for many of you. And I want to be sensitive to that. But I I also want to just speak from my own experience, right? For me to be uh, in the presence of my father, the the one who has, has raised me and loved me and supported me throughout my life. As a dad, to be in the presence of my daughters and to know the, the importance of that relationship, the depth, the love. Ah, oh, there is power there. At WMEC, I would love us to commit to spending time daily with our Heavenly Father. And I know that can, um, that can feel really legalistic in a hurry and that's not where I'm coming from. It's not that you have to do anything. I just want you to be with your dad, your heavenly dad who who loves you so much. There's a great verse that I came across in uh, Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3. And he writes, you God will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. WMEC, we, we spend time with, with God our Father to fix our thoughts and our minds on who he is and, and, and his promises for us. So I want to encourage you just to, uh, boy, as we unite in prayer as our first response, that we commit to, to being with our Father, to talk with him and to, and to listen to his voice. Jesus continues, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And so the first thing that Jesus teaches, uh, uh, teaches us to ask God to do is to keep his name holy, set apart, uh, supreme. John Piper says that, that phrase, hallowed be your name, it's a plea asking God to display the greatness of God. Uh, I, I want us to commit to seeking God's glory above all else in our lives. You know, I had the opportunity to talk both with, with Dennis and Amanda this week. Um, Dennis was, is recovering from, from brain surgery, uh, had a tumor removed, and, and it was evident to me as I talked with them, their hearts were that they just wanted God's purposes to be done in their life. Like in the midst of their uncertainty, in the midst of their fears, God, we just want your will to be done. Jesus, we want your name to be lifted up. We want to glorify you with our lives. It was a powerful moment, right? And and God is, he's bigger than, than what's happening right now. His purposes are bigger than our circumstances. Curtis Andrescu, as he suggests, adding the phrase, so that to our prayers uh, in order just to to lean in to bring God glory. Like example, uh, Father, we ask you to provide for those in need right now so that they would know that you are near to the broken. Father, we ask you to keep us safe right now so that we we can share the gospel with those who have no hope. 
Father, we ask, I ask that you would help me to spend time with you daily so that my kids would know how important you are in my life. So as we unite in prayer as our first response, I'm asking you to commit to seeking God's glory above all else. Jesus continues and he says, Father, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Would we commit to healing our community by bringing the kingdom of heaven here? Like now is the time to pray boldly, to love loudly, and to live humbly. Like we don't have all the answers. We don't know uh, the solutions. We do know that, that we need Jesus. And, and so we're going to stand in the gap for our community. We're going we're to bring the kingdom as much as we can to our neighbors and to our, to our government officials, to our church family. And it doesn't... Yeah, I don't think it has to be complicated. You know, Romans 12, 12, it says, Rejoice in hope, be patient in trouble, and keep on praying. Guys, just, you know, this, this year we launched a vision, right? To, to, to change the perception of the church through 50,000 stories of God's love and compassion. And in year one, we said, let's just take this year to listen to build empathy, to hear people's stories. Wow, what an opportunity we have right now to, to hear what's going on in people's lives and to, to pray for them and encourage them. Again, don't, don't wait for someone to tell you what to do. Like, go for it. You can do it. Be a blessing to someone. And what a time to change the perception of the church, right? So that people can discover who Jesus truly is. So as we unite in prayer, as our first response, we commit to seeing our community healed through the kingdom of heaven. Jesus asks, give us this day our daily bread. Now this may be quite literally uh, one of the first times that we've been forced to live day, one day at a time. And, and for me, it's not even out of my own choosing. It's just, a, I don't even know if I can handle more. I mean, I love to, to plan ahead. I love to, uh, man, schedule things out. When I'm making a decision, I want to gather all the best information I have so I know that I've, I've made the best decision possible. And right now, that's just, that's quite literally impossible. I mean, and, and so, oh, I'm, I don't, I'm frustrated by that. Um, Maybe I'm driving my staff crazy. I don't know. And, and yet I, I read this prayer from Jesus and I'm going, well, he's teaching me that, that God is going to give me everything I need for today. And, and so I'm asking you would, you, would you commit to believing that with Jesus, he's going to give you everything you need for today. And that's all that, that, that's all that matters. Right? As we unite in prayer as our first response, we declare our thankfulness and our gratitude for what God is providing today. I mean, it'd be a great opportunity for you in your homes just to, to share as a, as a family or with your friends or your small group, how is God providing for you? Where, where do you see the goodness and the grace of God in your life right now? And then to pick up on the, on the closing of that prayer. Jesus ends by asking, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Jesus calls the church to bring the fight to the enemy, to go on the offense. That the enemy wants, the enemy wants you to become inward focused, right? To believe the lies that you are alone in your fear and anxiety, that, uh, that others are a threat to your safety, not not someone as a, as a child made in the image of God, as someone worthy of love and compassion. We need to go on the offense. We need to fight against the plans of the enemy. So let me give you three, three ways you can fight in these weeks ahead. One, I think just to get scripture into our hearts and minds, uh, that, 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 the, that God's word is the sword of the spirit. 
for less than, uh, if you've got an Apple device, for less than two cents a day, you can, you can download uh, an app called the Vers Verses app, a great way for you to uh, memorize scripture. I just, I think that's an opportunity for us right now to get God's word into our hearts and our minds. Maybe you want to challenge me to memorize something, okay? Just bring it on, all right? Let's see what you got. Number two, uh, yes, we can binge watch Netflix, but at some point that isn't really great for us. Uh, so I think a way that you can fight against the enemy is to create something good. M make something, I don't, whatever that is, right? I mean, that, that could mean a whole variety of things, but I think to create is to, again, to tap into something divine, the image of our creator and and bring goodness into this world. Let's bring good and beauty into this world right now. Be creators. <clears throat> and then thirdly, even though we are physically separated, uh, it doesn't mean that we have to fight alone. Right? That, that I don't know who you would normally connect with in the foyer after a church service. You know, you would chat about your week. Whoever that might be, can I, why not call them up? And have that conversation, right? How's it going? How's your week been? How can I pray for you and encourage you? I mean, this is, again, an opportunity for us uh, to build into community. We have the technology. We have the means. You're not alone. You know, as I, as I look um, at our WNBC News email that we put out this week, let's continue to pray for, for, for Dennis and Amanda and the family. Um, again, that, that all, the, all the work that comes with the farm, that Dennis knows that that's all going to be taken care of, that, he, that they're not fighting alone. Let's pray for uh, uh, the Cron family. Peter Cron, many of you would remember him as a, as a member of WBC, as uh, the owner of the Bible bookshop. He passed away. Let's pray for, for the Cron family. You know, let's pray for Steve and Jenna Lee. Uh, the passing of Steve's brother, Matt, this week, tragically. Again, oh, man, there's, there's some hard things going through for people. Uh, don't fight it alone. That, that we still are a community and a church family. And that we don't want to fight alone. <clears throat> so again, as we, as we unite in prayer as our first response, let's commit to bring the fight to our, to our enemy and not to do it alone. I miss you folks. Uh, I wish we could be together. We will meet together soon. But in the meantime, pray boldly, love loudly, and live humbly. God bless.